I followed my dreams and opened an antique store to have adventures and spend time as a family. Sometimes you have to climb a mountain and open some new doors to find the treasures inside. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. Hey guys, welcome to today's episode. I am off bright and early this morning to set up for an antique show. We've decided to throw our very first annual antique show in a small community hall to kind of see how it goes. So I'm off at 5.30 this morning to go and set the hall up and hope that people turn up for this event. So follow along today. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as we show you our adventure here. And let's see how the show goes. So although I thought it was an early start today, when I got in here at about 5.45 a.m., there was already someone waiting to uh, get set up. One of the vendors was here. So I am feeling confident. I had a dream last night. I don't know if you ever had a dream where you've gone to work or gone to school and you feel like you spent the whole day there and then you wake up and you have to do it all over again. That was last night for me. I dreamt that I was at this show and uh, you know, we had people coming through. I'm hoping it's gonna be busy. You know, it's the first time I've done a show like this and I'm really nervous. I wanna make sure it's successful for all the vendors and a really good show for the people who are attending. It's not a huge haul, but you know, there is a fair amount of cool stuff that's gonna be here. So um, we have a few hours, well, about two and a half hours until the doors open. So I've got some work to do, getting stuff ready, making sure that the signs are out and making sure that the kitchen is ready because we're gonna be doing a concession stand today too. So uh, here's fingers crossed, hoping it's gonna be a successful day today. And as the vendors start to set up, I check out some of the things that they're bringing through. Everything from old model kits to Pepsi and Coca-Cola collectibles. The show is bound to have some interesting things for people. Just whether we're going to have enough folks through with some money to buy these things is the question. I'm sure that there's enough variety here that someone will find some cool stuff at the show. The question is, are we going to have enough people through the doors? Well, the calm before the storm as people finish setting up and get ready for the sale. We've got about an hour to go. And then it's going to be showtime. <laughs> she said do yourselves too. Getting quite the variety set up here. Okay, so Jim, Jim is one of our vendors here he set up, but he's telling me we're looking through records and everybody's seen the cover of Abbey Road, but there's a guy in the background there, right there, and who is that, Jim? Well, apparently that's my father. And we were over there in a, for a military convention back in the day. And uh, there has been discussions over the years whether there's truth to it or not. But it's certainly a family. It's uh, a, a family legend? A family legend. Ah, uh, well. Oh, God, it sure is. Well, he, he doesn't look overly impressed that the Beatles are standing right there. No, he wasn't. <laughs> He's not a Beatles fan, I take it? Not in those days. <laughs> Your dad is yeah. a military collector, probably yeah. had nothing to do with that, but that's exactly. pretty cool. It'd be but cool if it's true. So that's the family legend. Oh, every family's got legend. <laughs> so how's the kitchen staff doing this morning? Good, we're Instagramming. Instagramming. Our mm. hot dog show. Well, we open in just a few minutes, and you've already sold the hot dog so far, right? Yeah, deal. <laughs> Whole meal deal. <laughs> nice job. Chocolate bar. Uh, oh, did you eat the chocolate bar? You I'm don't it. wait. You don't want a chocolate bar? No, I have one over there. Oh, okay. <laughs> we set them inside so they don't just. <laughs> well, it's starting to get set up with some stuff. I mean, there's everything from World War II German machine guns to books to toys. The show isn't huge, but it does offer a little bit of everything, so it should be a pretty good turnout. Well, doors have opened and we definitely have some folks browsing and milling around. So hopefully they're finding some treasures as they walk around. Just to kind of show off some of the, the neat titles that have come through. We got your sign in there too. So there have been all kinds of cool things that showed up at the sale, everything from vintage postcards, if you're a collector of those or old pictures, all sorts of neat things. Uh, we've got automotive, if you're looking for old signs. It's actually been a pretty eclectic mix of stuff. Pinball machine over there sold right away. He had a price very reasonably. Lovely, if you know me, you know that I like these old war bond posters. That's World War I, French Canadian piece. Just a beautiful item. As I'm looking about here, you can see there's all sorts of stuff from 
you know, uh, daggers to war medals, more war bond posters, so good variety. Some German military collectibles, and these are all authenticated and real. There's a lot of fake stuff, you have to be very careful. There's even an MP28 Smizer. I mean, not the average sort of thing that you'd see at a normal antique show, but here one is and in fantastic shape. And for the kid that thought they had everything, this is a Johnny 7 circa 1960s, I would say. With all the accessories, I mean, this kid not only got himself a toy gun, but he got little grenades, rocket launchers, all kinds of stuff on there. That's probably the ultimate toy gun back in the day. Pretty cool. It was on and on the amount of really cool things that are just kicking around here. This is all from uh, Drake the Valley and the... Uh... Oh yeah, old uh, Wild Well controls. Now some people might remember that John Wayne played Red Adair in a movie and there's a Red Adair a Wild Well control hat and it's signed by Red Adair himself. If you've seen the movie, it's pretty iconic. John Wayne, a little later in life, did that movie, but you know, that's a reality of life here in Alberta. We have a lot of oil wells, as I'm sure they do in Texas, and sometimes they get out of control. Now, as I'm looking through some of these locks, there's certain things you want to look for. Now, these are railway locks, and you can see it's kind of uh, faint on there. This one says NAR, which is Northern Alberta Railway. That's a defunct railway line, and you know, very popular. There's also Canadian National Railway. Of course, they're still around to CN but all sorts of neat stuff. So you have to pay attention to these things when you're looking at them because some people collect certain train lines and certain brands. So the right one can be worth a lot more money than the other. They're a really good turnout. And even my father-in-law has decided to make a star-studded appearance at the show today. So did you get to get off work, Dave? Yes, I did. Oh, yeah. thanks for coming down. I had to come down and see what it was all about. My father-in-law, Dave, is a big fan of military history, so I'm sure he's going to find a lot of cool stuff here. There's, there's about three vendors with lots of military stuff. So, yeah, even uh, your in-laws can have fun when they're at a sale like this. I have a customer who has the sign advertising that exact boat motor cooler. The 40s one? Yeah, he's got a double-sided sign that got that on it. Really cool. No, it's metal. Really? Yeah. About uh, two foot square. And you don't see Pepsi coolers around. You see Coca-Cola all the time, but Pepsi... Yeah, well, they only made that for two years, right? And it's Double Dot. Double Dot tells you... What era was Double Dot from? 30s and 40s era, yeah. So this is a very early cooler. Unusual piece. And what's cool about it is when you... Cool, because it's a cooler, but also interesting is when you open up the lid... It's going the, door. Yeah, going door, and they advertise on the underside. So really neat. Embossed. Yeah, and it's, it is raised. It's embossed. Very cool piece. I've never seen one quite like that before. And if you're a soda collector or a collector of these sorts of things, you don't see something like that too often. My wife might be barbecuing the hot dogs in the kitchen, but they've got all the grills that you need right over here. Yeah. So my mom, Linda, has been here selling off some records. And it looks like some of the bins are kind of getting empty. I mean, this, these were jam-packed full earlier. So what would you say, Mom? Would you do this again? Time with you. Aw, Mom. And as we call it a night on our first annual event, I'd have to say all in all is a success. We had over 310 people come through the doors. Not bad for Little Hall. So the last people get their stuff put together and we get ready to call it a night. Okay, Abigail, so what was your favorite part of today? I liked helping um, sell the foods. Yeah, you did such a good job, honey. Jason, what did you like doing? I liked um, when we first came to them, when we were in, uh, letting people in, our first sale. And Steven, you think you'd help us out again doing a show? Maybe. <laughs> Teenagers.
I'm not sure how the day was for Melissa. <laughs> yeah, did you have fun? Oh yeah, I like meeting all the new people. Yeah, well I'm glad we had a good time. It was really nice to have my whole family help me out at the show. And to see a lot of friends and customers come through. All in all, it was a really fun day and I know the vendors all sold or had some good sales that day. And I heard that they want me to do it again next year. So maybe this will become an annual event and we'll try and get a bigger haul next year. Thanks so much for watching again, guys. I hope you subscribed and we'll see you all soon. Bye for now.